On January 1, 1972, Marvin Ford spent 30 minutes in heaven. Here is a portion of his testimony. He is in the hospital after having a severe heart attack, and suffering intense pain, when he comes face to face with the angel of death. I had gotten so weak. So I remembered what Jesus said when he was hanging on the cross. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when I did that the lights went off. And just like that my spirit left my body and immediately. I passed by so fast those bright lights at about a 45 degree angle toward the north. And just like that, I was looking down on the most dazzling sight I had ever seen or even dreamed or imagined in my entire life. The beauty, the splendor, the magnificence of that city was absolutely breathtaking. The golden hues that were coming out from there, and the rays of light that was coming from that city were just blinding to the eye. Only they weren't my eyes. My spirit was seeing that. See my eyes were on the bed down there. I don't know whether they were closed or open. But I was looking at this. I saw the walls of Jasper. Read it in the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation. Maybe you've already read it and you've already studied it. But if you haven't read it when you get home. They are 1500 miles long, 1500 miles wide, 1500 miles high, and they looked like they were at least 50 miles thick. Now picture that in your mind will you? And picture this, there were no shadows, inside or out. The walls were perfectly transparent because the light from inside that city was so bright that absolutely nothing could withstand it. And I saw in the foundation of those walls precious and semi-precious stones. I saw diamonds larger, much larger, and maybe ten times larger than the Empire State Building. Rubies. Pearls. The gates of pearl they look like they were at least 100 miles in diameter. I saw twelve of them. Twelve of those gates. Three on each side. I saw rubies and sapphires, sardonyx, beryl, topaz, emeralds. The various precious and semi-precious stones. And I saw from wall to wall, streets, millions of miles of streets of solid gold. Not paved with gold as one songwriter wrote, but those streets are solid gold, completely and perfectly transparent. But oh the splendor and the beauty and the rays of light that were coming from those streets. And I saw on each side of those streets of gold, mansions. I saw huge mansions. And I saw little bitty mansions and I saw mansions of all sizes in between. And I looked all over that city, all over that city to see what those mansions were being built of you know. And you know what? I couldn't find one. They were all finished. They're all finished. Jesus said in the 14th chapter of John in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And Jesus has done his thing. He's waiting for us to do ours. He's waiting for us to fulfill our part of the bargain he made. But the purity, the purity and the beauty of that city was absolutely unmentionable. There's no way. But I think Paul began to kind of spill the beans a little bit when he started writing to the Philippians in the 4th chapter and the 19th verse when he said my God shall supply all your need according to your brownie points that you marked up. No he didn't write that, he didn't say that. He says my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus and that is the way God supplies our needs. And I'm here to tell you that God that I serve is very super extravagant. All those walls of jasper, the streets of solid gold, the very thing that people work their fingers to the bone to try to attain. Men kill each other over, countries go to war over gold. That's the cheapest thing in heaven. That's what we walk on. That's what there's the most of, there, you see. Except, I saw through, in, around, and about, and all over that place millions of bright shining, shining shimmering scintillating lights. Glistening lights, all over that city. And they were moving with such grace and such poise, and such dignity and with such beauty. And they were all singing. They were singing, worshipping Jesus the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. The only thing, they weren't singing in English. 
They were singing in a heavenly language. And I didn't even have to learn it. I joined them, singing exactly what they were singing and everybody was with one accord, and everybody was on tune. And since we were worshipping Jesus, I said, Oh, I haven't seen Jesus yet. I quoted to you Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. When he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And I knew if I found the majesty on high, which is God the Father, I would find Jesus. And I could personally tell him how much I love him and how much I appreciate him. Now I was going through this maze of colors there was a changing process. I don't know why, I could describe it or even give you any scripture for it. But there was a changing process. And presently I came out into the brightest, whitest, clearest, cleanest, purest, most intense light that I had ever even imagined in my entire life. Oh I was seeing things that I had never dreamed of. And there, anywhere I would look in the upper level of the city 1500 miles square, with that rainbow or that oval type dome for a roof of the city, in there was the throne of God. In any direction I looked, there he was. But I knew. I knew that Jesus was sitting at his right hand because the word of God said so. Presently I saw him. A massive, light, shaft of light. And I seemed so small in comparison to Jesus. I worshipped him. Now when I say I saw Jesus, I knew it was Jesus. I could not make out any physical form. I couldn't see that, the light was so bright that I could not make out any physical being. The only way I could describe that. If you were to take an about 3 million candle power search light, one of these arc lights, you know, that you shine way up into the heavens to advertise the grand opening of a place. That went way up there for miles it seemed like, in the heavens. Those same lights if you would turn one of those down on a dark night and get out there in front of it, and look at that search light, at that 3 million candle power arc light and try to distinguish the filaments in that light. You would have the same success in trying to distinguish the physical being of Jesus but there exuded from that being love, compassion, tenderness, purity, power, glory but yet so tender. There was a gaze that I sensed. Have you ever just felt somebody just gazing at you? And you looked and you saw them gazing at you. And even while they were gazing at you, you couldn't stop it, they were there all the time? That's the way I sensed the presence of Jesus and I fell down at his feet and worshipped. I know what Jesus meant when he says out of your bellies, or out of your innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. There was a gusher of praise, and adoration and glory and honor going to Jesus that I could not stop. Nor would I have stopped it had it been possible. I was praising Jesus the Lamb of God, the one who died for my sins, the cause of my being there, the reason for my being there. The preciousness of Jesus just flooded my heart, my soul. And I was worshipping. And I heard him say, now it was not a verbal exchange, it was a spirit to spirit knowing, he welcomed me into his presence. And he told me to stand. And there I was standing face to face with Jesus. My Jesus, the Lamb of God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I was there in his presence. I began to ask him questions after I worshipped him for a long time. And the first question I asked him was Lord, you know his gaze never did leave me one bit, not one second. I said Lord, how is it that there are millions of spirits here in heaven, there are billions of people on earth and there are people that are coming into your presence continually, how is it that your gaze remains continually on me? I have your undivided attention. And in that tenderness, and in that love and compassion he says why don't you know that there's enough of me to go around? For every individual, regardless of how insignificant you might think you are. You know you think you're nobody, but let me tell you something, but don't sell yourself short. You are very, very, very important to Jesus. Because he never takes his gaze from you, 24 hours a day. That's the Jesus that we serve. Oh hallelujah, hallelujah. And folks, I don't know, if I break up, you'll have to forgive me. Sometimes I do when I get to thinking about Jesus and who he is, and who we are. And, you know, how he loves us, and how I love him. The next question I asked his was Lord, what about those prophets? Did I make false prophets out of all those people that said that I'd be going around the world and preaching to millions of people? 
are they false prophets? The answer Jesus gave was this. I have everything under complete control. I have never lost a battle, nor have I ever lost a skirmish. Hallelujah. And I found out then and there, the Jesus that we serve, there's one thing that he cannot do. He cannot lose. We as individuals, sometimes, we lose a skirmish here and there. We think we do, but Jesus has everything under complete control. We back up and recoup and we hit the devil right between the eyes. And he's got to obey us. I don't care how big, I don't care how many. I don't care the power, I don't care anything else. When the church comes together and takes the authority that rightfully belongs to us, there are not enough devils in hell, imps in hell, or demons in hell that can stand against the weakest Christian. Praise God! Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And they've got to obey you. They've got to obey you. They are subject to you and they are subject to me. There are only two cases that I have ever come against a demon-possessed individual that they weren't delivered. That's because they didn't want to be delivered. But when an individual wants to be delivered, brother they have to be delivered because of the authority Son of God that he's given us. All authority is given unto him, in heaven and in earth and he transferred that authority that God gave Jesus to the church. Take that authority. Live in that authority. Walk in that authority. Hallelujah. You're a lot stronger than you think. Hallelujah. Because you have Jesus living in you. Living in you. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And you do have the authority. All authority is given to the church. Praise God. When the church finally comes together and wakes up. I'm talking about the people that kind of pull themselves off to one side. I've got news for them. Just like I said at the onset of this service. They've either got to get in, get out, or get run over. There are a lot of people that think they are going to make it, that are going to miss it so far they won't even see it. When people will stand before him and say well Lord, didn't I cast out demons in your name, didn't I do these mighty works in your name? Didn't I do this, and didn't I do that and didn't I do the other? What did Jesus say to them? Depart from me you workers of iniquity. He didn't say that I knew you and forgot you, he said I never knew you. Oh thank God one know him and he knows me. You know him and he knows you. Hallelujah. That's who you are. That's who the church is. And when the church comes together in one accord, that gentle breeze of the Holy Spirit will break into a holocaust of Pentecost, and the entire world will know that Jesus is the Son of God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords and he has everything under complete control. I asked him another question. I asked, Lord, when are you coming back? Jesus says, before I come with my church, that's the last step, he comes back with his church, I'm coming for my church, but he says, before I come for my church, I'm coming to my church, in an unprecedented visitation. I read the last chapter. That's now. He has come to his church, right now. He's here to meet you tonight. And he will meet you according to the level of your expectancy. Are you expecting something from Jesus tonight? You are not going to be disappointed. Because he says where any two are gathered together in my name, there am I in their midst. And we are standing on the promises that my God will supply our, all our needs. All our needs. Spirit, soul, and body according to his riches in glory, by Christ Jesus. And Jesus is here, just anxious. If Jesus could have any anxiety at all that would be his anxiety. Just anxious to supply that need. Anxious to heal your body, anxious to supply whatever your hearts desire. We talked about a lot of things, about the kingdom. About the coming kingdom. About when we take authority, the complete authority that God intends us to take. And that is why Jesus is leaving his church on the earth today, is to take dominion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he has come to his church this very hour, 